हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कथा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वीड लाइक टू थैंक्स ऑल आर ऑल ऑफ आर सब्सक्राइबर्स एंड ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर गिविंग अ गुड रिस्पॉन्स फॉर आर वीडियोज ऑफ डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग ना फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेगमेंट वील डिस्कस अबाउट सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम विथ ऑल सॉल्ड एग्जाम्पल्स सो इन दिस वीडियो स्पेशली वील स्टार्ट विथ इंट्रोडक्शन टू सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स Now here, first we'll discuss about what is meant by signal. There are classifications with examples. Then we'll discuss about different operations performed on signals. And in later segment, we'll discuss about system with their classifications. So let us start with the first point that is signal. Now, as far as signal is considered, so basically, signal is defined as anything that carries information or that conveys the information. This is the broader definition of signal. in another way signals can be defined as it is a physical quantity that varies with respect to time maybe space or any other independent variable so if it varies with this parameter such kinds of physical quantities is known as signals examples it can be an audio signal voice signal video signal picture signals x rays or anything that gives us the information so this is the broader definition of signal now let us start with the next point as classification of signals now signals are basically classified in two forms one is known as continuous time signal and other one is known as a discrete time signal and then they are again classified into either periodic or periodic continuous discrete then even odd energy power signal causal non causal signals and so on so we'll see them one by one in the next two videos so first we'll discuss about what is been by continuous and discrete time signals so here it is continuous time signal now we can define it it is a signal that is defined at every instant of time that means a signal which is defined for every instant of time is known as continuous time signal or another definition is a signal which varies a signal which varies continuously with respect to time is known as continuous time signals this continuous time signals are also known as analog signals as they are going to be vary for every instant of time they are also known as the analog signal now it it simply shows it is a continuous time that means it is a function of time so it is denoted as x of where this t it is a time period or we can call it as independent variable now this is an important term what is mean by independent variable and what is mean by dependent variable so independent variable is one which doesn't depends on or is values not go not going to changed for any of the terms as they are called as the independent variable and always they are being plotted on x axis so the terms which are on x axis can be known as an independent variable whereas x of t it is known as a dependent variable or we can call it as shape of the signal it simply indicates shape of the signal so t is on x axis and x of t that simply indicates its amplitude will be on y axis and it is also known as shape of the signal for example Uh, let us assume that we have a signal as sinusoidal. So I'm writing this x of t is equals to a sine omega t. It is going to be a continuous time signal. It is a function of t. So if I plot this, definitely we can get uh, a slope like this, and so on, where this is our maximum amplitude a max, and this we can assume at a minimum. This is zero. This is pi. Maybe this is two pi. so such kind of signals are known as continuous time signal now we'll come across the next and the very important term that is called as a discrete time signal now we'll define it basically the signals are not going to be defined at every instant of time that means a signal which is not defined at every instant of time are known as discrete time signals or they are also defined as they are defined at a discrete instant of time that means for certain duration they are available certain duration they are being pulled off so such kinds of signals are known as the discrete time signal the examples of discrete time signals can be 
temperature measurement for different duration for example uh, in the morning session we have a temperature of around 20 degree celsius at 11 pm maybe if i count it at 12 pm we are counting at 12 pm not continuously so at 12 am if i consider it may be around 25 degree celsius and so on that means it has been taken for every samples so such kinds of signals we can call it as a discrete type signals examples can be uh, sensex then we have temperature measurement pressure measurements and so on so such kinds of signals are known as the discrete time signal now how can we represent them so they are represented as x of n where n is an integer which will be on x axis and x of n it simply indicates again shape of the signal it is shape of the signal or we can call it as a sequence of the given terms also now they are represented in different ways uh, one can represent discrete time signal with the help of uh, sequence in the form of a function or maybe a graphical representation so let us see how to represent a discrete time signals here it is a representation of discrete time signals now basically these signals are represented in three forms first by sequence representations so in sequence representation uh, let us assume that we have a sequence x of n which is having samples let 1 0 1 and 2 now here we are having only four samples having amplitudes 1 0 1 2 now if i put a arrowhead here it simply indicates that this amplitude is having first location that is n is equals to 0 so for n is equals to 0 we have an amplitude 1 now see if it is n is equals to 0 its next sample will be n is equals to 1 then it will be n2 and then it will be n is equals to 3 that means this signal is going to be a right sided signal so we can call it as a right sided sequence so in sequence representation this arrow here plays a vital role second if i assume another sequence let xn is defined as 1 0 1 and now if I put an arrowhead here, that means again it indicates starting location of the given sequence n is equals to 0. Now see, this is n0 and all the samples are to the left side. So we can get n0, n-1, n-2 and this is n-3. That means this signal or this sequence we can call it as a left sided sequence. And in the same way we can represent it for both sided sequence. So this is how we can represent a discrete time signals second is known as a functional representation so in many of the example you will see that either a sequence is given or a function is given so how can you define it in functional form let us consider that we have a function f of x is equal to it is having an amplitude 1 for n greater than 0 and less than or equals to plus 2 whereas it has an amplitude minus 1 in between n minus 1 to minus 2 and let us assume that for other values it is 0 so how to read it this function is having amplitude 1 in between n greater than 0 less than 2 having amplitude minus 1 in between minus 1 to minus 2 and otherwise that means apart from these two terms the value is going to be 0 so this is how a signal can be represented that is known as a functional representation now based on this functional representation we'll go for the third step of representing this which is known as a graphical representations so as the name indicates we should go for a sketch graphical representation we'll take the same example over here so to plot this we'll first take n on x-axis now first value f of x is having amplitude 1 in between 0 to 2 that means for first sample 0 amplitude is 1 next sample 1 again amplitude is 1 and for plus 2 also the amplitude is 1 0 to 2 amplitude is 1 next for minus 1 and minus 2 the amplitude is minus 1 so it will be on left side minus 1 is having amplitude minus 1 and minus 2 is also having amplitude minus 1 and then 
for all positive values and for all negative values the amplitude is zero so you can plot zero zero and i can place dash over here so this becomes our graphical representation once you understood these concepts that is uh, representation of discrete time signal it becomes quite easy to analyze signals and system now the very important concept as far as signal and system is considered is lies in between continuous time and discrete time signals so if you see continuous time signals are going to be continuous in nature that means they are defined at every instant of time so if they are defined at every instant of time we can get a lower limit in this case if i assume the lower limit is 0 the upper limit can be 3 pi that means continuous time signals can be integrated they can be integrated whereas if i come across the discrete time signal they are not defined at every instant of time though we get a minimum and maximum limit but we can't integrate them and hence in discrete time signal always go for summation summation from maybe lower limit to upper limit this is an important concept when you find a continuous time signal always they are integrated where if you find a discrete time signal they are going to be summed together so based on that all the concepts of signals and systems are dependent even if you see you can get equations like this integration of x of t dt whereas summation x of n only that means discrete time signals are summed together and they are being integrated together so this is about introduction to signals and systems in next video we'll discuss about periodicity of continuous and discrete time signals and then we'll discuss about even odd and remaining classifications thank you <laughs>